how to create a nurturing workflow that is optimized for tracking your campaign results. So just a few words about nurturing. So what is nurturing? Nurturing is uh, the concept of educating your leads through content to help uh, him go from point A to point B in their buyer journey. So most of the time you will send during like a set uh, period of time, let's say one week or two week, an email sequence. So let's say um, you want to nurture uh, the leads that download your ebook and the next step you want them to take is to uh, book a call with your uh, salesman. So you will have a workflow looking like that. So here would be uh, all leads that downloaded the ebook. You send them the first mail saying like, hey, thank you for subscribing. Here is the ebook link. And uh, if you want more information, please feel free to book a call with our sales agent. That's your main CTA, a call to action. Book a call with, uh, with a sales agent. You wait three days and you send another mail about um, your company values or your different uh, services with at the end another call to action of book a meeting with a sales agent. You wait three days again and you uh, send a third email presenting other part of your company, etc., cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The number of mail or the delay uh, will depend on your nurturing strategy. So you might think this workflow would work to do so, but we have one big issue with this workflow is that it doesn't let us the possibility to track the efficiency of the campaign. So as we said, the goal of a nurturing campaign is to uh, make a lead evolve through their buyer journey. So to measure that, you need to be able to measure the efficiency of the call to action you put in your nurturing campaign. So in the example, we choose booking a meeting. So with this workflow, you will just send the mail, so the lead will receive it, but you will not be able to see if he clicked and when he clicked in a easy way uh, in HubSpot. So to do so, you need to create, let's say, tracking properties to track all clicks that happen on a specific link or CTA. So I did it for example already, but let's create another one just to make sure you can do it by yourself. So first of all, let's say um, it's a contact uh, campaign. We say the group is contact activity because we want to track the click on uh, email. And I will call it nurtured overlink. Next, and the file type is single checkbox because the workflow will check if the lead click and if he click, it will check the box. So click next and create. So just do it for all the links and CTAs you want to track. And then we can uh, start building our workflow together. So we create a workflow from scratch. In our example is a contact based and we want to start uh, with a blank workflow. So now uh, let's set uh, the enrollment trigger. So let's say we want to enroll every leads that has a open lead status. So we just do that. Then Quick notes on re-enrollment, uh, because it's like an email sequence, you don't want to re-enroll your leads on this workflow, because if you do so, they will receive twice the same communication if the enrollment trigger criteria has happened again. So an advice would be to turn off the re-enrollment every time you're uh, building nurturing campaigns. Then first step, you still send a mail. So we send the mail, we wait three days or the number of days you want, depending on your strategy. And then instead of sending mail to, you will, uh, we want to check if they click or not. So to do so, you just need to create a if them branch and choose marketing email and select the mail you sent. Then you have a lot of uh, different possibilities. The, one, enfin, the two that interest us is contact clicked a link in email. We select any link and we want as well to, um, to track if people reply to your email because most like 
most of the uh, most of the time you will not want them to receive an automatic email before you reply to their manual answer. So to do that quickly, you just clone here. So you have two times click on any link. You click on the second one and you modify it to contact reply to email and you save. So now what happened? All leads open enter the workflow. They receive the first mail and three days uh, pass. Then we check if they click or reply to anything in the mail, they go on the left. If not, they go on the right. So now we want to be able to identify if they click on your main CTA, which is book a meeting, or if they click on other links, let's say, um, a link to your blog or your, to your uh, service page or whatever. So we need to create another event branch. Click here, event branch, marketing email. We find the same email. So that was this one. Oh, sorry. Not this one, this one. Uh, contact click in email, but this time we want to check if they click on the meeting one. And we want to see if they replied. We save. So now, after three days, we check if they click or reply to anything. And then we check if they click on the meeting or reply, or if they click on something else. So if they click on your main CTA, you just need to set up your main CTA property. Yes. And you set up as yes. And here, so basically, if they are here, it means they, are, they have clicked or replied. So if they are here, it means they clicked on meeting or replied. So here, it means they click on anything else. So you just set up the property that we created together, which is nurtured overlink. And you set it up as yes, save. So now, we can track if they don't click or reply, or if they do, and what did they click on. But the thing is, before sending a second mail, we want to see if the lead is still, is the communication is still relevant for your lead. Let's say uh, these lead status are open. If they are unqualified, I, maybe I don't want them to continue receiving this email because it doesn't make sense for them to push them to book a meeting if Anyway, we will not be able to purchase your product. So to do that, we will make an event branch again to verify uh, their relevancy. So to do so, we will choose list status. Once again, it depends on your campaign criteria and is none of unqualified. We apply and we save. So that way, the one that are still relevant to receive the communication will will go here and the one that are unqualified and I don't want them to receive any more emails of his campaign will appear here. And one last thing you might have noticed is it's cool. We can track um, if they clicked and what did they click, but we can't, uh, it, the, the workflow is ending for them. So, if they click on book a meeting or reply, maybe you don't want them to receive another email that will make them book a meeting because they already did. So it's okay to end the workflow here, the nurturing campaign. But in this case, if they click on your blog, you still want them to book a meeting at some point. So you just need to go to other action and make them go to the checking process. So here is your complete model on how to send one mail and track the result. You might think is a lot of work for every mail and don't worry, basically you don't need to redo that every time. The only thing you need to do to add another mail is to go to the first mail, tuto email one, actions, clone, this action and all after it, and paste it on, uh, on the branch that concern only relevant leads. You place, you save, and you just need to change the email with the good one. So the second email of the sequence. And you need to change it here as well. Is here. 
don't forget to change this one as well. Why do I um, clone? Is because it saves a lot of time than just doing it manually. And last step here. Sorry. And you see in only um, 20 seconds, we add another step on our uh, nurturing campaign. If you want to create another one, same thing, take the last mail, this section of after it, place here and um, change the email as we just did. I will not do it again, but you get it. And you just need to repeat for every single step of your uh, nurturing campaign. So one last thing is, um, it's good to be able to track uh, which lead click on which link. But if you want to have like a nice report that shows the, the evolution of your uh, result, like evolution of the number of click uh, through time, you need to time step these properties. So if you don't know how to time step a property, I will add like a video in the description that I made before that will teach you how to um, time step any properties or action in HubSpot. So you just need to follow this video and you will be able to track those dates. I hope it was, oh, sorry, <laughs> just need to review and publish. Um, for the environment, it depends if you want to start from new, like basically only new leads that will um, enter your that uh, meet these criteria after you turn this workflow on will be enrolled, or if you want to include all your existing leads that uh, meet these criteria. That just depend on you, you choose and you turn on. So I hope it was clear enough. Um, if you want to know more about like data management and uh, to see all the workflow I did before, I created a unique um, private web page that is updated like weekly. Uh, and I will present a v detailed video, a detailed article and a to-do list um, action plan to make all the workflows you want to do. If you want to ask me for a specific uh, workflow to develop, just go to this um, private web page and make a request. The link is in the description. I hope it was clear. Have a great day and see you soon.